Hello and welcome to part 3 of the Meet IOTify series. In this video, we will better understand the IOTify test editor, its helper functions, and then use these features to implement a stateful device model. Click on the Create Test button to get started. We will create and run a barebones test to simulate a smart light bulb from scratch first, and then add a few enhancements later in the video. For this example, we will use the MQTT protocol and the connection parameters can be left to the default values. Let us give our test a name and click save to complete creating the test. Before we start modeling our device, it is necessary to understand the life cycle of the device. We will call each part of the life cycle a stage. In it, running and finished are basic stages of a simple IoT device. Transitioning between stages is done using the next function. The helper function sidebar details how to use the built-in functions concisely. You can find detailed descriptions in our documentation. We will model the device's behavior when it powers on in the init stage. Initialization of the device state can also be done here. IOTify device models use the state object to persist the device state across the various stages in the device lifecycle. Chance.js is a great library to initialize your device state. This will ensure that each client will have a different set of values during simulation. Remember that an instance of your device model is what is known as a client. The test editor offers intelligent completion for the built-in functions to make development easier. You can also use HTTP REST methods within MQTT tests to fetch or send data as necessary. We are fetching a simple config object from a remote server in this example. Returning an object in a stage will publish to the topic defined in the protocol tab. At this stage, we can now preview our test to see how a device would be initialized. Here you can see the state object with the randomly assigned values. The payloads that have been sent and any logs that we have added to the device model are also visible here. The system logs are auto-generated to indicate the connection status and the state transitions. Let us now move on to the recurring behavior of the device in the running stage. The remote config that we fetched contains a heartbeat interval value that we will check for. We will send a heartbeat message if this interval has been crossed. If the client is in its penultimate iteration, we will transition to the finish stage. Note that the client will continue in the same stage if the next function is not called. In the receiver tab, we can define the behavior when the client receives a message from a topic it has subscribed to. Here, we will handle a device status request and reply with the current device state. In the finish stage, we can add any clean power off behavior that the device has. For example, we will publish the device status here. So this is a basic template for a smart light bulb. Let us create a run setting to run this test. Head over to the run settings tab and click on add new. We will run this test with 10 clients for 10 iterations at an interval of 3 seconds. As we have discussed before, clients are independent instances of a device model and iterations are the number of times a test is run. Let us enable the capture of logs, state and payloads as well. We will now go back to the tests tab and run the test we just created. Taking a quick look at the state and the results, you can see that each client has a different set of values in its state. You can also see the logs we defined and the payloads that were sent or received. Here you can see a drawback in the method that we chose to model our device. Even though each client has distinct values, these values remain constant throughout the life cycle of the device. That is, values such as color that should change in real life use are constant here. Let us refactor our test to accommodate this requirement. We can define a randomized function within the state object so that it is reusable across all stages. Let us move the parameters that need to change during runtime to this function. We can now call this function in the running stage to randomize the device parameters during runtime. While we're here, let us also add a metric to measure the latency of our REST request. Custom metrics are covered in detail in its own video. Moving on to the running stage, we will add a randomized function at the end of this block. 
We can also add a metric in the receiver block to count the number of messages received from the server. In the finish stage, we can store our client state into the glob for the data to persist between test runs. Glob is a fast in-memory store that the clients have access to during runtime. IOTify Glob APIs are also covered in detail in its own video. Since we are persisting this data, let us add a check in the init stage to fetch the device state if it exists from a previous test run. This may not be so relevant in this use case, but persisting of state is essential as your models become more stateful and complex. Let us edit the run setting to extend the run duration and start the test. As the test is running, we will publish a payload to the topic that our clients are subscribed to. As we check the results, we can see that the payload was received and the corresponding response was sent. We can also see the plot in the metrics tab. and the persisted state in the glob tab. I hope this simple example has shown you how easy it is to model a device on IOTify. You can go into as granular detail as you need depending on your use case. We will cover a few such complex use cases in later videos. In the meantime, I hope you will give this a try by signing up at iotify.io.